is a Movie Vision feature presentation. The following motion picture is rated R and is not considered suitable for younger viewers. So, I'm with Claudio Silva, the biggest gangster in the UFC. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, man, I'm not a Netflix gangster, you know. I'm not that guy that watch Netflix, Bob Escobar, and say, I'm a gangster. And when things get, shit gets worse in the streets, you know, because they insult people's family or country, they say it's just business, or they go and call the police, you know. We have a code, man, just code, never call the police for, you know, for your enemies. That is cool, it's crazy, so. completely different world, man, for me. But before we get into this, I wanna know what you think to Fight Island. Man, that's amazing, you know, bro, it's like a dream come true. Uh, since I was in BJJ back in the days, I was watching like a Brazilian fighters come to Abu Dhabi and compete in a grappling tournament called ADCC. Mm -hmm. So yeah, man, that's amazing. I tried to fight here last year, I couldn't make it. Couldn't get in the car, you know, and now I'm here. So man, I'm here. I'm ready to go. It's uh, it's gonna be epic, historical, you know, because right now the pandemic is is stop all the sports. Mm -hmm. Only UFC is going on. So you know MMA. So that's man. It's a great time to fight, you know. For sure, brother. So you, what card were you trying to get on? Khabib Poirier. Yes, that's the one I was yeah, trying yeah. to get on. That was a good card, man. It was. It was. To be honest, though, it was too hot, man. It was like. 55 degrees. Like you go outside and your camera just goes. Through. It's crazy heat. Never ever in my life have I experienced that. It, it doesn't get that hot. Or does it get that hot in Brazil? Not in Brazil, you know. Some parts in Brazil, yes, but uh, not 55. <laughs> no, 45 or 55, you mentioned? For 55. 55 is too much, never. But uh, 40, at 40, yes. Yeah. But I, I used to live in Kuwait, you know. Oh, did you? So, yes, I used to teach there. And uh, yeah, man, it's the same feeling, you know. I experienced that before. It was tough. Yeah, it's crazy. Man. I was feeling like I was living in the hell. In hell, I was like, man, what, this is too much, man. It's great. And even the sea, the temperature of the sea. When I was here, I was like, man, I need to cool down. Ran into the sea. The water is warm, brother. Man, it's it's hot, hot too, brother. <laughs> hot too. Yeah, it is. It is. You know, when one they told me don't go to the beach because the hot, the water will be hot. I'm yeah. like, no, okay, I'm Brazilian, can go. You know? <laughs> wow, man, I was like, I was burning. You know, I was like, ah, burning, it's burning, burning. I'm like, man, that's crazy. You know, I'm a brown guy. You know, brown skin. And when I got there, I was like, man, I was feeling like I was uh, a white person or a ginger. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man. That's serious, man. That's not. That's not bullshit. It's know? not, man. It's a different, yeah, different diff temperature, brother. It's in the next level. It is. <laughs> of and when, when people say it's like opening the oven, it's really like opening an Open oven. An oven. Man. That's how it feels, you know. It's insane, man. Insane. So, you're a British Zillion. Yeah, yeah. I am. Very cool, man. Yes. So talk to me a little bit about that. A uh, London, man. It's it's like where. I think where I born again, mm. you know, where I have my second chance, second life, uh, is a place that I always say that, you know, it's a country that I came with only one ticket way, 200, uh, 200 pounds in my pocket, wow. you know, I didn't have a ticket back to Italy or Brazil, so I met a Brazilian guy, he did the, the translation in the immigration. And the guy, man, he just said, listen, this guy has everything wrong. He has all the reason to, I send him back. I've been working here for 15 years. I never let, allowed nobody get inside like this. So maybe he had an, he lived here in the past life or he has something that connects to London. And he just stamped the passport and there, the rest is history, you know. London were the place where I started my MMA career. London is the place that I first had my MMA, you know, my BJJ Academy. When I start, uh, when I got my black belt, you know. So, man, I'm proud to live in London, you know. I'm proud to call myself a British Zillion. And I saw, man, when I was in London, I was, I used to go, you know, see Stratford there, like uh, building all the, the gymnasiums, you know. Yep. And one day I told the Brazilian guy, listen, man, in 2012, I will have a visa, I will have a, a BJJ Academy in Canary Wharf, and I watch the Olympics. Everybody laughed. So yeah, so and then in 2012, guess what? I was there. I was had my gym. I was have uh, my, my my visa, and I was watching the Olympic Games. You know, man, London is everything for me. That's amazing. I man. just love London, man. That's amazing. 
even when I go abroad, when I'm going to Brazil somewhere, I'm like, wow, right now I was going to a cafe, or right now I, you know, I was in the tour, you know. Man, London is amazing, man. you know. Like my first contact with London was uh, when I was back in the days when I was teenager, you know. I was selling crack and drugs. Uh, like all night, I used to tell people, man, this is 24 seven. This is like, uh, we work, I never say, you know, I used to tell the guys, man, we work like um, a business. So we are 24 seven, you have to work. And I used to go home, you know, like late at night. And one day I watch a move, a film that changed everything. Which film? Pretty Little Things. Pretty Little Things? Yes, yes my man, good And film. talk about um, an African guy that uh, was running from his country. He was a doctor, he was working in a hotel. Yeah. And, uh, and his boss, you know, he was doing like uh, organs traffic. He was taking like nah. uh, kidneys and change for pa British passports. You know? Really? And then, wow. uh, yes, and then this guy, he has two jobs. He works in a hotel and he was a, a cab driver. Not a cab driver, he was like, uh, uh, yes, he was a cab, cab driver. And also, there is a beautiful girl there. She was a Muslim girl. And uh, they used, she used to hire her sofa to him, you know, so he was living the sofa, he sleeping in the sofa, living in the same house. So all the time, you know, immigration just come and knock the door and they have to go in a run, you know. Was, I was like, wow, man, look, wow, where is this country, you know, and it was London. And then I saw like a Tower Bridge, London Bridge, I saw London, I was just fascinated, you know, I was like, Wow, man, this looks like another country. Yeah, and I love London because sometimes I'm feeling back in the, back in the 70s, 60s, you know. Yeah, because of the architecture, it's the new and the old is always together, man. For you sure. Know? Sometimes, man, London is amazing. You yeah, know? I do love London. It is cool, man, and I see exactly the same as you there. But what I've never ever seen is Brazil. I've never ever been to Brazil, and I want to go so so much. I need you as my security guard though. Yeah, <laughs> I will hook you up. If, even if I'm not there, I send guys to look after you. Man, you know, man, you're man, gonna man. see favelas. Yes. You're gonna go you know, so, and see everything. Were you born and raised in the favela? Yes, I, um, I was born in a small town, you know, and, uh, and I grew up in a small town also, but it was a very rough place, you know. And when I grew up, I moved to Rio de Janeiro and it wasn't different, you know. I was in the favelas. So we're always there, always around. Yeah. Was in the slums. My so your film for England was Pretty Little Things. My film for Brazil. I know was which City is City of God. God. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's oh. exactly the same what's happening in Brazil. You know? Yeah. Is it, it really? Is, is, it, yes. is it exactly like that? Yeah, it's exactly the same. Wow. Know? Now sometimes things got even worse. Yeah. But yeah, that's our reality, you know. Uh, of course, not everybody in favela, they are gangsters and killers and drug dealers, mm -hmm. you know. The majority of people, man, they're like, you know, 97%. They are people that, uh, they are workers, they are work hard people, mm -hmm. you know. They wake up in, every morning, they get in the buses, you know, and they work, they mm -hmm. sacrifice, you know. Unfortunately, you know, uh, a few percent of the Islams, they are gangsters, mm -hmm. you know. I think poverty just breeds that in a certain sense, doesn't it? Like. When, when there is low income in certain areas, people have to make money. And if you can make money quickly... I don't even say low income, you know, I say misery, you know. Really? You see guys that they don't have nothing to eat, you see guys, wow. you know, but some guys, they don't have a strong mind and they go for the crime. Mm. And some guys, they go for sports and they work hard, they mm. study, you know. Like, in favela we do have gangsters, but we do have a lot of doctors that come out of favelas, you know. We That's have really like cool. lawyers, we have uh, teachers and everything. That's really cool, man. So, it's two side of the coin. Of course, man. So, what side were you on? I was in a bad side, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was always a crazy kid, you know. I was a guy that would never let people take a piece with me. Yeah. So, when I was growing up and I started like uh, hide a gun, and then I started selling drugs, you know. And when I saw, man, I was co cocaine. And I was doing like robberies, you know, because I'm never, I wasn't scared of anything. Yeah. And I was in, I was training BJJ and I was doing drug activities, you know, selling drugs and robberies. And I used to say like, uh, BJJ is my hobby and crime is my profession. Wow, that's, that's great. And look how your life's turned as well. Yes, now 
MMA is everything, you know, MMA is my job, my passion, it's my life. So, yeah, yeah, one second. Talk to me a little bit about, like, so all these guys, they had lots of cash, right? They do have cash, gold chains and everything, you know. And they ask you to look after the money? Well, they are saying, listen, the cops come into the slums and they are, uh, take our money, you know, because they have a full amount of cash. So I said, do you know what? I have a plan, I have a bank account. So yeah, give yeah. me the money, I'm gonna keep that money safe, you know. And anytime you guys need that money, let me know. I will give you back. So I was taking the money, buying drugs, you know, selling drugs, <laughs> and make like three, four times more. But I was always paying them on time, wow, you know. That's and good. one time I just tell, listen guys, we can make even more money that way. And they agree, you know. So it became a business. It became a business, you know, like, any business. Yeah. And is that where you got your business like acumen or your business brain from? It's from the favela. Yeah, it was from the favela. You know, if a good drug dealer, man, you can, you can be a good, a great businessman in any, any yeah. place. You know, it's all, it's all about never expend money and follow the rule number one. You know, just keep money safe. You know, yeah. and pay tax. Yeah. <laughs> Because in life, there is only two things that you catch you up, you know, you catch you. Death and tax. Yeah. <laughs> the tax man will knock, knock on the door. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Such a crazy story. Um, you were showing me some of your bullet wounds as well. Yes. Can I you tell me about what happened there? Yes, when I was uh, 14 years old, you know. 14? Yeah, 14. I was making 15. So I had a fight with a guy, he tried to stab me. So I took the knife, I knocked him unconscious, you know. And uh, my friend, this guy was older than me, he was on his 30s, but he was a killer. And my friend told, listen, this guy, he walks around with a gun looking after you. I'm like, no way, man, I will beat him again, this guy is nothing. So and there was walking with a my friend, you know, and we saw him in a pub. So he was sitting and my friend said, hey, let's catch him. I said, no, no, no. Something told him, no, don't go, no, he's too relaxed, there's something wrong. So I swear, you know, for my mom's life, I look at the sky, I saw a, a hand hold a gun and then I started running, you know. So he shoot me and I was running away. It was, he was like, I was running from him and he was shooting me and running. So that time I didn't get any bullet because when you run, yes, you exactly. have no direction, you know, <laughs> your hand, you cannot shoot somebody when you're running. So what I did, I said, you know what, I have to finish this guy, I have to kill him because I'm not gonna become a static, static, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna kill him, so what? Uh, and then uh, I got a gun and I was full of, uh, looking for him, you know? So when I saw him, I shoot him once, he fall. So I tried to finish him. I came close to him, shoot him in the head, but the bullet doesn't come, you know, out. <laughs> this is crazy. It was three times, click, click, click. So that time, you know, man, I was completely blind. And uh, my friend said, hey, come on, run. So I was running, so man, I just hear three, three shoots, you know. One was on my foot, one was on my butt, you know. And the other one, I didn't know where, where it goes, uh, wasn't missing. So man, I was running, running. And when I was running, I told my friend, listen, I got shoot twice. My friend, shut the fuck up, just run. And I was feeling all the blood, like uh, going down my legs. And man, everything becomes so cold in really? Brazil, you know. Your body just goes cold. Go cold and then dry mouth, you know. And uh, we have to run and, and have to walk in the in the kind of forest, you know. Brazil has like a big farms, you know. So you have to jump in the farms to run away, otherwise the cop will catch us, you know. So man, I remember I came to somebody's house, uh, and then they called my father, my family, because we cannot call, obviously we cannot call the police, you know. First of all, because we're in the shooting, and yeah. second, because if we're gangster, not gonna call yeah. cops for another one, you know. So I remember my dad's face; he was shocked. He was like, he couldn't speak, you know. Even though he's a guy, a former military officer, you know. So he was like, he couldn't say anything. And then I say, what's happened? And I told him, ah, man, a guy tried to rob me. We have a fight, and I got shot. But then somebody told him, so I remember when we went to the hospital, straight away the, the cops asked, hey, why this guy got shot? My dad, the father, you know, he said, hey, yeah, somebody shoot him, he shoot somebody, somebody shoot him. So, and then they are like, you know, asking a thousand questions. They say, listen, we're gonna torture you if you don't say what's happening. They're gonna torture you. Yeah, that's what they say, you know. 
<laughs> what in the 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 hospital say? Yeah, in the hospital. They say, they say that to me, you know. No. They say we know what you do. We know a drug dealer. We're gonna beat you up. We're gonna fuck you up. I say, I yeah, do whatever you like, you know. I was underage. They cannot touch me. But I say, yeah, go fuck yourself, man. I'm not gonna say anything. Shut, shut the fuck up. And uh, man, I end up like uh, two weeks in the hospital, and uh, I it was a tough time, you know. It was a really tough time because. Once you got shot, you realize, you know, everyone wants to be a gangster mm. until gangster things happen, you know, until mm. what a gangster does, you know. Everybody loves like uh, Pablo Escobar on Netflix, El Chapo on Netflix, mm. but when they see violence, when they, they feel violence, they're like, oh, I'm a peaceful guy, I call the police, oh, please help me, God, mm. you know. So, yes, um, when I was running, you know, I said, I God, please don't let me die. I'll be the nicest guy ever. I go back to church, you know, my mom, she's a priest, you know, evangelical priest. So I said, I'm gonna go back to church. But that, that was weird, you know, man, because everybody was like, ah, now let's see if he, what he's made from, you know, mm. let him see his comeback. So I came back 10 times worse. Wow, know. did you came back? Yes, I just remember. To, just to show that you- Not even to show, you know, because I want a revenge. I never give up, you know. And uh, I thought I would be, ah, okay, I'm gonna be cool, all right? I said, no, man, you know what? I'm gonna get revenge. But then the guy, he left the city, you know? I never saw him again. And yeah, man, you know, that's what happened. So then I had, uh, I had to do physio because I couldn't walk. It was a crazy time, you know, tough time, but I learned a lot of lessons, you know, from that. Maybe God uh, stopped me to kill this guy, yeah. otherwise should, uh, I won't be alive, maybe I'll be in jail forever, you know. Wow. Once you kill someone, you become a killer. Mm. So you start to like to do it, you mm. know. I know people that they not only kill people, they open them up, you know, in Brazil. Not even in Brazil, killers, they are killers, man, you know. They are crazy, man. They are like, you know, they, are, they want to show how crazy they are, you know. They want to like make statements you know, yeah. of the crimes. They don't want to do small crime. They want to go crazy. You know? What's the worst thing that you've seen um, where someone's tried to make a statement, as you've put it? Once I saw a guy, you know, in Brazil, they used to swallow uh, cocaine capsules, you know, and go abroad. So I remember that guy came from Paraguay with loads of capsules, you know. So he was asking for some guy. So the guy find him and. Uh, they invite us, you know, they say, hey, come, let me show you guys something. I was a teenager, you know, so I saw the belly guys open. So this guy killed him and opened his belly and took all the cocaine. And I saw it and I, I have seen that. So see, so it's not uh, in Brazil when you say I'm a gangster, you know, it's the same as a terrorist. Yeah. You cannot have a passport, you know. It's not a cool thing, you no. know. I see in London, kids, uh, London is all the countries, mm. people, I'm a gangster. It's not yes, a cool no, thing, not, man. Yeah. You have to kill people. You, people will come after you. Mm -hmm. Police will come mm -hmm. after you, you know. All the gangsters will try to, to take your area, you know. It's not a cool thing, man, you know. It's a very crazy life that we're going to end up in jail or you're going to die, you know, and people don't realize that. No. I mean... That's a crazy story. This is one of I saw, you know, and uh, yeah, I remember seeing that, you know. I remember, man, and, like, it never come out of my mind. But the craziest thing, I could go home and sleep. <laughs> I was just a teenager. Yeah, man. that's what I was going to ask you. How did it affect your brain seeing that? Because what part did you see? Did you see the aftermath or did you see the process? No, I saw him open up, you know. I saw, like, his dead body oh open, God. you know like in a big hole in his stomach, you know, his belly. So you can see everything inside. Man, listen. Uh, what does that do to you? Your, your to brain? me, I don't know. I like... Because you seem like a, I seem saw, like a strong, like, sensible, smart person. And there's not many people that can witness something like that and thing. come out as good as you. You know what I mean? Well, I think I have to go through it in my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, these crazy things I haven't seen, you know, make me my head strong and yeah. make me realize what I have nowadays, you know. And uh, that time, man, I was just like, ah, oh, fuck, whatever, I go to sleep. And uh, I don't know, man, you know, because a normal person will be shocked for life, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. But I didn't have anything, any problems to see you, that crimes in Brazil. So when, since I was a kid, I used to see dead bodies, you know. 
So always when I know somebody that will die, or me and the other kids are like, ah, let's see that. You yeah, know, let's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Curious. See that. Curious, you yeah. know. Also, I used to live near to the motorway. When I have car crash, we're always there, you know. Uh, to be honest, man, you know, I have to show how tough I was. It might, I will never like oh, I'll be panic or something. Mm. Otherwise, they will kill me as well. Mm. You know. Yeah. When they spot weakness, is that yes, I will never show weakness. So, just to reach track a little and bit. And after, you have to keep your mouth mouth shut forever. You do know? You? And uh, if these cr crazy guys that do these kind of things, they doubt about you, mm. they will come after you. you mm. know? For sure. So man. it's like a truly crazy world, you know, man. For sure. So I want to like recap a little bit. So when you got shot and you were running through the forest, yeah, did you think you were gonna die? Yeah. Or did you? No, I didn't. I you didn't. didn't. That's crazy. I didn't think I would die. I was just bleeding, you know. I was just running. My mouth was dry, and the guy said, "Don't ever take water because you're gonna die." I'm like, "All right, you know." Don't take water. Yeah, they what? have. There is like a shock on your body, you know. Nah. I don't know if it's true or not, I didn't take, no, I would not take a risk. <laughs> yeah, now I know that. <laughs> I'm not gonna get any, nobody will shoot you. Yeah, hopefully. You stay alone. <laughs> wow, that's so cool. So, well, I say cool, it's a cool story, but it sounds like a terrible moment for you, man. But what I wanted to know is, you said you came back 10 times worse. Yes. So, talk to me about like what, like how you went 10 times worse and then how you got out of it. Man, I was like crazy, you know, man. Every time I was watching crazy death, you know, like I had that feeling that somebody would come and shoot me, would kill me, you know. I remember once I was like, man, I was like, do you know when you cannot stay calm, you cannot stay quiet, you like move, mm. you go different paths, you know, different ways you never do. I was feeling that somebody would come and shoot me. I was, I truly like, I was meant somebody would kill me, somebody. I was paranoid, you mm. know, because I have seen so many killers, so many deaths, you know. Sometimes where I just talk with someone, somebody come and shoot the guy in the head right in front of me, you know. That's happened Stab. before. Yeah, many times, you know. One day I remember I was talking with a guy and this uh, underage guy came to me and grabbed me like this, hey, come, I need to talk to you. And he was younger than me. I was like his idol. And I didn't say enough. I'm like, yes, why are you holding my t-shirt like this? He said, look behind your, your shoulder. I just saw a guy come from nowhere and shoot the guy, you know, like the head, you know. The guy that was holding your sh shirt? Yes, he said to me, look behind your shoulder. So when I look, I just saw this guy run and shoot the guy that I was speaking with, talk with. And I was like, man, now everybody will think that I did it. Why you guys did that? You know, they're like, no, no, don't worry. And then, you know, that kind of things that I go through, you know, man, I'm, I was going through when I was teenager, you know, when I was in my 20s. So, man, it's like all the time something bad happened, you know, and I was feeling, man, the touch of the death. So then I said, then I went to jail. You did go to jail, Yes, did you? for like, I, I went to jail in Brazil because of a robbery. I, I went inside a mall, a big mall, you know, and I, I robbed like a cinema that there's a lot of cash there. Mm. So the guy that's supposed to give me the running, he just ran away, man. I was by myself, oh. you know, and I tried to run and they catch me, so... That was the craziest time because I used to say I don't have. Um, I don't. I used to say to my friends I don't have feelings anymore. I used to tell to talk with my 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 friends. Listen, we don't have feelings. Like I don't care, man, anymore. You know, to beat people, to hurt people. I I don't know. I, I used to tell them I think we are monsters because we have no feelings. We don't care for anyone anymore. Like we don't care what people think about us. We don't, I don't care. You know, and my friends the same. You know. But uh, when I went to jail, brother, I was like feeling so horrible, not because of me, because of my mom. That's what I, do you know what, I was going to ask you about this, no? like, were you worried about your parents' safety? Yes, not safety because I didn't uh, snitch on anyone, I didn't say nothing, you know. Uh, they catch me and I took the blame of the robbery, but uh, what my mom feels right now, what her feelings mm. about me going to jail. She raised me, you know, mm. like I never... I, I, I was never a rich guy, I wasn't a rich guy, but I had food at my table at the time, you know, and I was like, my mom is an evangelical priest as well, mm. so I was like, what the fuck, man, my mom, she must be bad, man, mm. she must be feeling so sad about it, you know, and what, listen, this is a big shame, you know, for my mom, for my family, 
Do you know when you felt you feel that the sky yeah. fall on your head and mm -hmm. your shoulders? That's exactly how I felt that day, that night. You know, so when I came to jail first, I saw the guys. I said, yeah, "That's my my neighbor. Yes, I know that guy. I know this one. I I, I know I knew everyone <laughs> there. You know, and uh, when you came to the jail, man, you know, first of all, you hear about the jail. Yeah. But then you step inside the jail. First thing you have to do when you get inside, take your shoes off and say, excuse me, you gotta show humble now, humble. Uh, you gotta be really? humble, a humble guy, you know? Yeah. If you come inside like you're the man, Macho, yeah. like, yes, I'm the tough guy, I'm the kingpin, they're gonna kill you there. You know, you show some respect. Wow. Because they are killing you guys, you know? What's, they, sorry, can yeah. And then like, uh, as soon as I get there, you know, it's a teeny room and a small room with hundred guys. Oh, really? Hundred guys. And they they sleep, you know, like one guy head up, one guy head down, one guy head up. Yeah, yeah. Man, it's a, it's crazy, man. It's tough, you know. But see, so if you call yourself a gangster, you speak loud. So you got to keep that, you know. You cannot just start crying, you know. Yep. In jail, I saw guys crying like babies, you know, and they never get any respect. What happened to them? Wow, they will like use them for everything. You tell them, hey, hide that uh, drug inside your ass, hide that mobile phone in your ass, you know. And they will take blame of everything, you yeah. know. That's exactly what happened there. Wow. You know, so what's worse, jail or the favela? Well, jail is tough, you know, it was a tough time. I saw a riot there and I saw like guys get their head cut off, guys play football with their heads, you know. I saw guys roll people in, um, in mattress, you know, and set them on fire. I saw all these kind of things, and then you see the, the the special police force came inside the jail. Everybody, man, you know, with underwear, sit down, and a dog come close to you. You know, man, it's not a joke. You know. How did you get away with all like, these memories? Yeah, yeah. Because I had it's small. No, because next when I was in jail as well, when I came there, you know, first of all you come to a small place, and then you come to a Massive one, a penitentiary. penitentiary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, when I came there, because what I did, everybody was like, "Wow, this guy is tough. He's such a young guy, 20 years. Look, everything he have done, you know. He's a tough boy. And he's a fighter also. So when I first came, uh, one guy he tried to set me up. He said, "Ah, this guy robbed me outside." And then they invite me to have a, a talk. You know, it's like you're gonna be judged now. They will judge you, you know. They will see. They will see how how is your behavior like outside, you know. Yes. They will see like how legitimate you are outside of jail, you know. So I came there and they say this guy say you robbed him. I say never robbed him and never know this guy, you know. And ask all the gangsters, ask everyone, all the inmates. They know me, you know. I, I used to do business with everybody here. So ask them. Mm. Ask their opinion. Let's see what's gonna happen. Mm. And the guy said, no, man, Cloud is cool. He always buys stuff from us. He always pay on time, you know. And guy said, listen, I used to keep my money on his bank account. He always pay me on time. This mm. guy not, never have done nothing bad. He's never been, he never snitched anyone, mm. you know. So, and then they say to me, do you want to beat this guy up? I say, no, bro, I don't want to beat anyone. I'm in jail. I just want to do my time and go home, mm. you know. I don't want to beat people that are in the same situation I me. Mean, yeah. I tell, I told them, Maybe this brother, he just have a, a, a bad time, you know? So I'm not gonna do nothing to him. And then they, they did this, you're a very smart boy. Because if you beat him up, we're all gonna kill you. We're all gonna stab you, we're gonna break you up, you know? So that's what happened in Brazil. If somebody in jail tell you, hey, let's beat that guy. And he, yeah, let's do it. They call you a robo, you know? You know a robo? When people, ah, do this, do yeah, that, yeah, yeah. you know? So there's so many tricks inside the jail, man. You know, not so in Brazil, confusing. it's everywhere. Yeah. Crime is a crime everywhere in the world, you know. There is no a place that people are dangerous than the others, man. That's mm. my opinion mm. about crime, you know. Mm. So it was a tough time, you know. So this old guy, man, he was on his 50s. He said, listen, look at us. It was like six old guys, you know, old men. I was, yes, I'm looking at you guys. He said to me, you are going to stay with us, but you never will make any problem with the workers here in the jail, you know, with the officers. Mm -hmm. Don't ever swear on them, mm -hmm. don't ever tell them to fuck off, don't ever kick the cell, okay? Mm -hmm. Say, all right, you all used to be a Brazilian national champion in BJJ. So what the fuck are you doing here, bro? Do something with your life, something positive. Look at us, we are fucked. We're gonna, I expand, 
20 years in jail, this guy told me. He said, we have no life, brother. You can do something to your life, you know? That's the word, man. That's something that, like, you know, stick. Yes, I was a shock, you know? I was like, wow. And then it was a horrible place, man. It's like, you don't have a family, you don't have good food, you know? And you have to be smart. So I said, I make a promise. I said, do you know what? When I leave, I will never be here again. And I will be back to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and I will become an MMA fighter, UFC fighter, or fighting pride, whatever. I will never stay here again, you know? And that's what I did to my life, man. I never came back to jail. Never ever. Wow. Never. So you leave jail. And then what happened? How did, did you go straight to England or? No, no, no. I left and then I was um, I was training, you know, I was training, training, training. Also, that time I was in uh, my mom's city. I was in a small city, you know. So a lot of judgments, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, some family, like some mother, some parents, that doesn't want that I train in the gym, that the same gym as their kids, you know. So man, there is a guy, man, you know, he's like a father, man. His name is Marcio, Mar Mar you know, Marcio Mota. He always support me. He always was my sponsor. But when I left jail, he knocked my door. What are you going to do to your life, my brother? I said, I don't know, man. I'll become trained again. I got to move, you know. They said, no, 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 no. You train in my gym. I said, come on, man. There's no way I can train. I was 17, like two months, my face on, the, on, on TV. He said, come on, man. It was on TV. Because what I did, you know. Um, most of people that try to rob that mall, they got killed. I was did they? Yes, by the police, by the the, the securities, you know. But I was one of the only ones that escaped alive, you know. Me or two guys only. So then he said, "Listen, you coming back to train Monday? I okay? If you don't come, I'm coming. I pick you up." I said, "Okay." So I went train, you know. And you, of course, I did bad things, you mm. know. But some people, they, they try to take a piece with you. Mm. I remember the first day they, somebody came to me, ah, uh, you're not shamed for what you did. So I was an old man, you know? And I say, go fuck yourself a mm. bitch, otherwise I'm gonna shoot you in the face. Mm. I robbed like, I, I didn't rob poor people, so mm. go fuck yourself. Don't talk, ever talk to me because I'm gonna kill you, you know? Mm. I told this guy, man, I'll cut your head and shit in the house, or fuck off. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> that's what I said to the guy, you know? <laughs> so, and man, it was tough, you know, like, because, once you go to jail, it's never gonna leave you. Yeah. You're ex inmate, you yeah. know. I can be the president of United Kingdom. Yep. I can be the president of United States. My haters, they always tell me that, you know. <laughs> Sometimes a hater always tell me, ah man, you're a gangster. I'm like, of course I was, but look my life now. Becoming something yeah. different, you know. That's that's what's cool about this whole story, is that I don't think there's anybody Maybe you will know somebody, I don't know, but I don't think there's anybody that's been and seen what you have seen and lived in the UFC full stop. And if you think about the, when, when you were in the middle of that shooting, when you were running away, it was not, what were the it's chances? not the first one, I had many. <laughs> really? I'll ask you about that in a minute. But yes. Imagine what the probability was in that moment that you were gonna make it out, you were gonna fight in the UFC, you were gonna travel the world, you were gonna fight in New Jersey, you were gonna travel to Abu Dhabi on Fight Island with all sports in the world. I would be a British citizen that exactly. paid tax. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But I mean, that is the this is the coolest story I think I've ever heard in terms of like a U-turn in somebody's life. I had many second chances, you know. Um, I'm so thankful for God mm. that put the right people on my path. Yeah. And I had uh, amazing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu coaches, you know. I had Paulão Rezende, man. Mm. That guy was Marcelo Garcia's coach, yeah. you know. Mm. So man, this guy one day he came to me. So he, I wrote to him, hey, can I please teach at your place? You know, is that he wrote to him? Yes, I see you guys have a house for athletes. You know, he said yes, come down. So when I came, that guy, you know, man, he's so serious. Mm -hmm. You know, he came to me and he saw me training. And then I told him, say, listen, he asked me why you wanna train here. And then I told him, listen, man, I was a gangster. I was, I just come out of jail. I need a second uh, time on, uh, chance of my life. Mm -hmm. Can you help me? He said, listen, I'm gonna help you out. You're gonna live here, you're not gonna pay rent. You're gonna train full time. But if you make any mess around, you will see the, 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 the evil 
you see death, man. So don't mess around, you know. So train hard and do everything I tell you to do. I'm mm -hmm. like, okay. Bro, it was like an army, you know. Was it? Yeah, this was in Postos de Caldas, you know. Yeah. And uh, man, this guy, man, he's amazing, you know. Because his kids, they're like doing like bike and they're champions, you know. And one of them, Renato Rezende, he was just went to the Olympic twice. His daughter was doing gymnastic, you know. Wow. They're all champions, you yeah. know. So this guy, man, he was training me. So I'm like, yes, what do you think I have to do? He said, you did already, you train hard, you know. You, you deserve the win, you know. And he was tough. I have to wake up. Imagine a gangster, wake up at six. Have to clean all the mats. It was three massive mats, you know. Humbling. Right? Humbling, you know. Mm -hmm. And he make me like, uh, there is like a big mount over there. He said like, you gotta climb that, you gotta run. And I have to run, man, you know. And uh, then I have to come back training, clean the mats after, eat, sleep, and train at night, you know. It was, man, it was, you know, and then I had Robert Drasdale as well. When I, from Poço de Caldas, I went to São Paulo to train. So I, I meet him in a big camp. So I told, I told him, I'm a big fan of yours, man. I would, I would like to move to São Paulo, you know. He said, come on, man, come, stay in my house. But then people find out who I was back in the days, you know. Yeah. They're all, they all against me. They're like, hey, no, we not accept that guy in the, in the, in the team, blah, blah, blah. Really? He was the only one that took me. Wow. And as soon as I arrived in his city, he said, listen, everybody's against you because what you did in the past, you know, I'm the only one that told you to be here with me, you know. So I was living in his house with his mother, with his daughter, oh, sorry, with his sisters, you know, and I was so ashamed, you know, really? because, you know, when nobody gives you that credibility, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. because I was in a house with him and sometimes he leaves, Ah, I gotta go somewhere, stay yeah, with my family. Yeah. And I was like, man, I don't wanna go downstairs because there are only women, you know, and I have to be here. Mm -hmm. So, do you know when you're like, I'm a very respectful guy, yeah. you know? And uh, his sister knocked the door. Hey, come, let's watch a movie with us. I'm like, no, no, I'm cool. Here. Come on, let's go and grab me. <laughs> and, and I have to go, you know? And they're, everything they, uh, Robert Drys Davis is half Brazilian, half American. Yeah. So, in their house, everything they watched was in English. And I was like, just like I stayed to him, you know. And they're like, hey, talk to us. I'm like, oh, okay. And it was a big shock, you know, I for bet, me. I more bet. than see dead bodies, people open up. For me, what the most shocked me was to see people, good people in life, you know, people that will welcome you, wow. like give you a second chance, give you a place to train, a place to live, wow. give you food and don't ask for nothing, mm -hmm. you know. Like, uh, we are still friends till nowadays. And, uh, man, it's, it's everything for me, you know? It's everything, like, I was crazy, you know? I was shocked, I was like, wow, man, I never met people like this. Well, of course, my mom, she used, my mom and my father, they used to help people, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, help poor people, mm -hmm. like, uh, try to raise money to give for people, homeless, you know, food for this kind, like, homeless people. I grew up that way. But I thought only my father and my mother was like this, mm. you know. And when I I start like travel, I start to see that there is great people, yeah. you know. And uh, yeah, man, I think like when I was with Hopper Drysdale, I was look at him speak English. The guy was speak Spanish, travel the world, world champion, did the same. And I'm like, yes, that's exactly what I want to be, you know. And I will think when back in back in the days when I was like a teenager and I was training BJJ. I have a massive collection of magazines, you know, Grace Magazine, Tatami. Mm -hmm. And I was always read about Minotauro, uh, Paulão, all the, the, the guys, you know, from Grace. from Carson Gracie, from Brazilian top team. And I always dream about that, you know, I always have that dream. So, man, I just like was, I always, like, I was doing bad things. I was in Islam, I was, you know, doing all that things. But I wasn't feeling that I make part of that world, you know. I wasn't feeling that I make part of a, from my mom's small city That's what because I was reading all the time. Yeah. Of course, I went to school. I didn't make university, but mm. I was always a guy that loves to read, you mm. know. And uh, man, I was just like, man, come on, man, that's not the life, you know. I remember I had a rich girlfriend, and man, the girl was just studying, studying, studying. She wants to become a doctor, and she used to bring me to these rich parties with rich kids. Bro, when I went there, they were, like they spoke, they they talk about going to Europe, go to America. They do speak English and they talk about become doctors, engineers, you know, lawyers. Mm. 
And I'm like, what the fuck, man? Their schools is better than mine. Mm. Their schools is better than my friends' schools. Like, so when I go back to Islam, my friends like, I want to buy a car. I want to be one key of cocaine. I want to rob a bank, you know? <laughs> I was like, bro, we just talk about crazy things. Yeah. I told them, listen, I went to my girlfriend's party, friend's party, and I saw these people, brothers. They are like, I calm down, they're relaxed. They talk about positive things mm. and we always talk about bad things mm. like go jail kill people mm. drugs and and then i start to realize what the fuck i'm gonna become in mm. five years you know that's cliche you know no, sounds cliche a, well it even is. when people ask you where you see yourself in five years yeah nobody ever asked me that before but i started to realize like what the fuck i'm gonna be in five years yeah. i said and then i started what to did realize, you think to that question jail you know dead you know Lucky, if I was lucky, I would be in jail with that path, you know. But then, man, it was like a crazy thing, you know. And then I started realizing, man, say, come on, man, you know, I gotta get away of this. So I always have that vision. I always visualize myself in UFC, being a world champion, you know. I always, like, I had something with me that nobody taught me ever. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid and my father, my father and my mother, they are, from, they are farmers, you know. They come from farm, they used to tell me. We're gonna take you to the farm. I'm like, ah, okay. So when I was a kid, I visualized myself swimming in the river, mm. climb the tree, and hide the the, the horse. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Take like apples and yeah. oranges, you know. And that's something that I brought to my life. I bring to my life every sense. Wow. If I plan to make a business, I visualize me, you know, like open up the business. Uh, you know, make the acai, you know, selling the acai, advertise, talk with my employers. People, some people, they can see. But vision is something that you visualize in mm. your mind, in your brain, mm. you know. Some people, they can see only with their eyes. Yeah. I can see, with, I can visualize with my brain. That's a cool you sentence, know? man. That's what I do, bro, you know, for everything I do, I visualize. I visualize thousand and thousand times, you know because it's gonna become reality, mm. you know? First of all, it's a think, then become habit, yeah. and then it's gonna happen. You're right, and it's, it's only ever happened to me once, and it's to be here, like, to be, literally, it's to be here. And I just thought, it, like, it was, like you say, cliche, right? Visualizing it will happen, and, like, you just slowly manifest it into reality. Yeah. And law of attraction, powerful. brother. That's it. That's exactly yeah, what it law is. Of attraction. Brother. That's you know? exactly what it is. And people don't realize how powerful our mind is, you mm. know. And uh, yes, basically, that's what I did, you know. Like always, before my fights in BJJ, I was thinking I'm gonna pull guard. I go for plata. If plata doesn't work, you know, I go back to triangle, and I'm gonna sweep him, and it started to happen. I'm like, wow. You know, and one day I spoke with Damian Maia when I was purple belt, he, he was going to fight against Jacare, you know, and he was talk about that. I'm like, wow, I, I just do it already, yeah. you know. And I remember, man, you know, see Damian Maia train with blue belts, purple belts, like brown, black belts, you know, and doing the same game. I'm like, why this guy doing the same thing? You know, he's never going to beat Jacare. Yeah. And that year he beat, he beat Jacare and become world champion, you know. That's crazy. And uh, man, like, and also, when I was back in, back in the time in slums, there's this guy, my father, one day, my father used to have many business. He tried to have a business, you know? So once he had like a pub, I remember this guy, he used to sing in, sing in English. And he used to tell him, Claudio, you're gonna travel the world, you're gonna be you know, on TV, one day you're gonna be famous. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about, <laughs> brother? Look where you live. And he would knock my door and say, hey, come on, can you play, can you bet in the animal game for me? And the Jogo do Bicho, you know? Yeah. Every Brazilian, they love that game yeah. in Brazil. It then it translates to English as animal, animal game or animal bet, you know? So I said, why you make me bet every single what, one? You mean when they fight? No, no, no fight. Oh. There is like a, a kind of like a, a, a balls a with the name of the animals, you know? Oh. And they make like, a, it's like a illegal lottery in Brazil, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, Every yeah. Brazilian love it. See. So, this guy, when I came to London, you know, I was like, man, I, li I hear that music somewhere when I started to understand English. And then I went to YouTube, I'm like, tick, tick, tick. I will see the lyrics in English. And I'm like, yeah, and that guy sing that music, you know, was Lionel Richie, you know, was like uh, Barry White, um, 
another one as well marvin gave yep. you know that's why winds earth and you know that's mm -hmm. why i love all this that, mm -hmm. that, that old music you know because of that it's guy and like i met him like few years ago when i got to ufc i met him nah. and he had family you know because because before he was kind of a homeless yeah. right? alcoholic you know now he has a family man i'm like and he told me hey i told you one day you're going to become a star now on tv you in interviews and i'm like man how come man how come and then i told him you know and always when I see him, I make him sing for me. That's you know? fucking cool, man. <laughs> man, I just love my life, you know. I just, I love the man I became, mm -hmm. you know. I love my, my journey, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm a blessed man, you know. Yeah. I'm a blessed man, you know. You are, you are. And of course, now, now in a, I'm in a better position. I always help some guys, mm -hmm. you know. Some BJJ kids that come to Brazil, they don't have a, to London, they don't have a place to stay, you know. I say, come on, man, stay in my, in my, my, my house, you know. Just, man, just sleep in, my, in the mats, on the sofa, whatever you like. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I pay the entrance in the competitions, you wow. know. We have to give something back, yeah. you know. That's amazing. Because I had many people that helped me, you yeah. know. Like, uh, I had four years, no fight. So when I came back to London, I had a gym. And, uh, man, and I met some they, upstairs. They have, like, a illegal weed cannabis shop, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one day the cops came and they fucked everything up. And these guys, they, they like... The cops fault for some reason. The canal travel will become uh, belong to me, yeah. and they like interview me for five, five hours. You know, in the police station, say I don't know nothing. I don't know these guys. I don't never saw them, but I didn't know them at all. You know. And one day, man, I was really like the cops say, listen. Now we show us everything, like because every money I get, I show. You know, mm -hmm. That's my students. That's how much money I make. Mm -hmm. If you guys want to see my bank account, they say no, no, we cool. But just leave that place, please, because. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have troubles all the yeah. time. I said, all right. So I left the place and I lost my students. So I lost, man. I lost my students. Didn't follow me up because I moved the area. Yeah, yeah. So was my comeback to UFC, you know? Man, I was so thankful because I lost that gym. Yeah. Listen, what's happened? I had no money. It was 2007, uh, 2018. I have no money at all, you know? It was 2018. 18, when I came back in Liverpool. So, see, that's another crazy history about London. So the guy that the, the, the shop belongs to him, you know, that was part of the shop. I met him on the street. I was like, hey, do you know me? I said, no, I don't remember you, bro. I said, hey, thank you so much. If it wasn't for you, I would, I would be in jail. Thank you. I do anything for you. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and he said, listen, bro, that shop was mine. I'm like, yeah, but I don't know you. And yeah, I know you had a gym below. I know that you took all the blame. Yes, I did. He said, man, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Like, oh, okay, cool, you know, all wow. right. So then I went home and I'm like, man, I got to fight, man. I have to fight. I have no money even to do my camp, man. I have to do something, you know. Just call that guy. Say, hey, some brother, I really need your help. Say, what I can do for you? Bro, I need 3,000 pounds. I pay, I will fight and I pay with 5,000. He said, listen, uh, I, I'm going to sponsor you. So... I'm gonna sponsor you. I'm gonna give you this three thousand. I'm gonna borrow three thousand, and then the two thousand. I'm gonna sponsor you with two thousand. I'm like, okay, all right, cool. I say, where do you live? Am I live in that place? I say, okay. By Saturday, the money will be in your door. Somebody will knock your door, take the money. I'm like, cool. And I'm like, ah, this guy will never make that, you know. Yeah. Now this guy won't make that. Saturday night, like one a.m. Like, what the fuck, man? When I open the door, hey, I'm here in behalf of uh, this gentleman here, so that's your cash. I'm like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? Like, yeah, okay, all right, cool. So this guy, he doesn't even talk to me on, on phone, you know? And then, uh, I'm like, okay, all right. So I f he, one day he invited me for dinner. I said, listen, man, I know you're in a bad situation. I know life is being tough for you, you know? But I talk, explain him everything, you know. He said, listen, don't put any pressure on your shoulders, brother. If you win or not, take your time to pay me, you know. Wow. Just take your time, please. I said, okay. So I won, and then I won one of the, of the <laughs> night, you know. And then I came to pay him. He said, the money is yours, brother. It's nothing mine. It's all yours. Like, man, London is... I love London, man. I just love London because... I can tell you five, ten histories about when I was fucked up, when I met people in London, I don't even know them, I talk to them. 
I was just kind to them, you know, for no reason. Like when I was in a bad situation, they call me up. They say, "Hey, one guy wants look what's happened. This guy is um, he was in London studying, you know, and he he wants to have four hours PT class." Mm -hmm. And they call me, my friend called me, hey, can you borrow me your gym, please? Uh, this guy wants to do four hours PT. I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? So the guy was there doing his thing, you know. So the guy started talking to me, hey, um, I would like a, a seminar. I'm like, okay, all right. I went to a faraway city. I don't even remember really? in London yet. The guy was just studying there. I went there, teach the seminar. Didn't make much money, but I didn't complain, you mm -hmm. know. The guy was nice. Then I went home, we become friends. <clears throat> One day I was, just when I, I made, uh, just after my fight that I broke both feet, you know, I was, man, I was, man, come on, man. I'm like, what am I gonna do now? I'm gonna take too long to fight, mm -hmm. you know? This guy called me, hey, Claudio, some Kuwaiti guys will call you. They wanna hire you to work for them. I said, how much am I gonna make? He's like, 20,000 Brazilian reais. I'm like, what? Yes, go, cool. yes, I'm all in, you know? <laughs> That's London, man. You don't even know who you talk with, you know? Yeah. I truly you believe, you know? Mm -hmm. I met great people in London, and <clears throat> and these guys, they don't, they tell me, you can tell the history, never mention my name, you know? Mm -hmm. I have a great sponsors in London, I have great friends, you know? I just love London, man, you know? I don't even think you could like, I think if I wrote your life in a movie script and showed it to a film man, he'd be like, it's not believable. <laughs> I don't know. Everybody tell me that, you know, like, ah, your life can make a movie. I'm like, I really, Yeah, no, it really could. Think it's that, so, no. like, but it's like, it's, I don't know how you like describe it, but it's like, it's so crazy that like, you can't write it. Like no yeah. movie writer in the world could have come up with that because wow. it's so powerful. Maybe one day, you know, we never know. Yeah, like, a full reptile movie. Man, but I like, yes, <laughs> done, done, yeah. let's do it. Yes, bro, but like life is amazing, you know, life is amazing. Like a lot of people complain, ah, oh, my life is this, my life is that. But mm. people, they don't want to come out of their comfort zone. That's you know? right, that's they just, right. How we want to live something new that you just keep doing the same thing? Brother. Nail on the head, nail on the head. That's exactly right. Exactly. I couldn't agree more with that. It's you have to step outside of your comfort zone. You, you have, have to, you know, everything. you have to challenge yourself. Exactly. You have to do things that nobody wants to do. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a fight camp, man. Uh, how are you going to win if you don't want to train hard? Exactly. If you don't want to try go in bad positions and put yourself in bad positions you know ah my cup today i'm so sore yeah we have to train yeah. uh, i got beaten up in the gym you gotta come back yeah. tomorrow because it's just like second round you got yeah. beat up first round well this is the second yes. round good yes we i can't wait to take you to rio oh, man dude, you know, i show around, wait to go show around brazil you, you know? have to be my security guard <laughs> oh you don't worry man you know we'll like, make a cool documentary with your life out there so when you're fighting, is everybody in the favela watching? Yes, uh, where my mom lives, everybody wow. is watching. You know, everybody, everybody. You have to get, you have to tell your mom if she can to video some of the reaction. Yes, yes. I will ask her, no, but my mom shows in church, brother. Yeah, <laughs> oh, fair enough. But like, uh, man, it's a, it's a dream, you know, to be a UFC fighter mm -hmm. because a UFC fighter mm -hmm. because I always watch these guys, you know. Back in the days mm -hmm. in Brazil, I was like, wow, look at this guy, man, man, he's so great, he's amazing, you know. Man, I was like, man, I, I really want to have three, three victories in UFC, mm -hmm. you know, now I have five. I it's a great path, man. It's crazy, dude. I used to work in a hostel in Rio, you know. Did you? Yes, I was a tourist guide. <laughs> Were you really? Yes, but uh, I used to take, like, tourists, yeah, yeah, British, yeah. Americans, Canadians, yeah. you know, Dutch people. We used to go to Brazilian parties, you know, in the slums. The name is Baile Funk, you know. Man, it's some... What's the name of it? Uh, Baile Funk. Baile Funk. Yes, this is a favela party, you know. So funny things happen there, man, you know. Really? Yeah. What like? Well, one day, you know, I took these guys <laughs> and I told them, I explained them the rules. Listen, be careful, don't go crazy on the girls because these uh, gangsters, they have 10 girlfriends, you know. Mm. Uh, don't take pictures of people, especially if they have uh, uh, gold chains and guns. 
you guys will be in trouble, you know? So behave yourself. Mm -hmm. Brother, the first thing that the guy did, came to the, the owner of the favela, the boss. Yeah. They stop everything and they say, hey, come here. Who is with that guy? I'm like, it. He said, he took a picture of me. I say, yes, man, I'm so sorry, I apologize. I explained him everything, you know, but he doesn't have a clue where he is. He doesn't know the rules I explained, but you know, he's drunk or he's high. He said to me, what can you do? I say, well, this is his camera. I took the camera, I gave it to the guy. He said, you do whatever you do you want, you know, because you're the boss. And I explained to him. Well, like smash it or? Now I told him, do what you want, you know, and if you want to keep, you keep it. He said, no, 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 just delete everything. Just delete everything, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, the camera will be with you. But from now on, tell this guy he has, an, he born again. That's his second born. You know that, he told me, no. He said, do you know that? I said, yes, I know. And he said, we know you because you've been coming here like every month for all the time. And I see your, the way you behave. You're a respectful guy, you know, you never get yourself in trouble, but you, you can go. I'm like, okay, right, no problem. I took everyone and I left. <laughs> This guy, he had a second life, brother. Jesus Christ. Yeah, because it's like... Would that happen with me then, if we was filming in, in favela? Mm, not really, because if you film there, I have to ask for permission first. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I cannot just go there and film and just film. Right, makes sense. No, yeah, all yeah. the time, I was like uh, going to train, and there's like five Canadians, <laughs> they beat yeah. off everything, you know? And they said, listen, Claudio, go speak with them. Mm -hmm. like, hey guys, how are you? Good morning, why are you guys here, you know? you." See that guys over there? You guys cannot be here. You cannot take pictures. Give me your your, your cameras. So I delete everything. I show to them, and they say, "Tell them to go." Like they are not gonna kill everyone. Yeah. You know, because enough. imagine if they kill like a, tour, <laughs> a British tourist. You know, True. police will come over and over again to to the slums. You know, and it would be bad for the business. Mm, that's a good point. You yeah. know, but gotta be don't don't go crazy. No, no, no way, brother. <laughs> I think it would be, I just want to like, maybe go to your, where you grew up, see the house, speak to your friends, see how people see you now as an athlete, and then we go. <laughs> yeah. no, we have a good time there, yeah. we have a good time. People are not that stupid, not crazy. Nah, that's cool. It's like everywhere in the world where you go. That's it, man. It's you have to respect people, you have to 100%. respect the rules, you know. You cannot just come and think you're the king of the world because yep. Same consequences here. will come after you. Same in Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Yes, exactly the same. You just have to respect the culture. Yes, you gotta be respectful everywhere. Yeah, definitely, man. God, you've left me kind of speechless there, brother. It's like a crazy, powerful story, man. That is just insane. I can't get certain images out of my head from just imagining. So I can't even imagine what it's like for you, man. It's, it's crazy, crazy story. But. Let's move on to one of your fights. Yeah, because yeah, I want to watch it. So, what's your favorite fight, your personal favorite fight that you've had in the UFC? Man, my favorite, I don't know. Was it good to beat Leon Edwards in my hometown? Yeah. Now it's well. number three in the ranks, yeah. you know. But was even amazing to beat uh, Nardin Taleb because he was too arrogant, you know. James Krause came in. Uh, first person that came in and he said he respects you as a fighter and he respects you as a person thinks you're a nice guy but he doesn't see where you're better than him what do you have to say to, to him about that that's what everybody thought you know mm -hmm. and all of them got uh, top out got elbow in the face you know yes he has to think that he's good you know because mm -hmm. I'm think I'm better mm -hmm. than him you know and uh, we're gonna see mm. on that night, you know, 17 October, he will see why. The reason because he say that is because nobody knows what I'm gonna do, you know. Nobody knows how, which cloud will come mm. because I'm always coming better. Mm -hmm. If you see my fights, mm -hmm. I'm better and better and better. I'm improving, you know. I respect him, he's a great guy, mm -hmm. you know. But you get stopped. Mm. What round? I don't know, bro. Doesn't matter, first, second, third, he will get finished. Uh -huh. Very cool. So, there's a few on here, right? Um, so, 
Nordin Taleb was a cocky guy. He was, man. Most of his respect from ever, you know. What, what was he? Did he say anything before the fights that was no, really disrespectful? Uh, before he put, posted my picture on Instagram, said, This guy's a pussy. I don't think this fight will happen. I was just about to move to 84, but now I will fight this pussy, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, and people are showing me, you know. I don't care. People can talk, you know. Uh, I love to. That's what I do, man, you know. I'm a quiet guy. If you go crazy, okay, no problem. Mm -hmm. Can talk, no problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you're gonna see what's happened. Yeah, for sure. I wouldn't want to fight you. <laughs> <laughs> they allow us to dog, they never bark. So. Yeah, for real. Just rah, rah, rah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're gonna watch you against Leon Edwards, right? Yes. I mean, Leon has, is on a run now, isn't he? But he can't he get a fight. Well, it's crazy, you know, man. Like, they didn't like him much, you know. I don't, mm. I don't know. I don't know, brother. He tried UFC to... didn't like him. No, no, I'm not saying UFC, you know. I think the fans don't like him much. Right. Because um, when I s he has a eight win streak mm -hmm. and he doesn't have much followers uh, no. like people in the top five, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, bro, I truly don't know, you know, why they don't like the guy, why they don't support the guy, you know. I don't know. I have not a clue, you know. No, I don't really either, to be honest, because. I've met him a few times and he seems like a nice Yeah, he's bloke. a good yes, he's a good you know, a good fella, but I just don't I don't yeah, know. Yeah, same, same. I don't know. So obviously you've now you're like you, you do a lot of your training in, in uh, Britain and England. Have you seen him since the fight in any gyms like any No, I never have seen never. him in gym. Uh I live I mean stay in London all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's in Birmingham. He's in Birmingham, yeah. so Fair enough. So, I mean, this is a young Claudio. Wow! <laughs> Six years ago. What does what when you look at this image? What does it make you feel? Ah uh, man, the whole thing. Proud, you know, man. I got UFC, man. Then I'm just proud of myself, you know. That's cool. Here you are. Leon's in the cage waiting for you. Talk to me a little bit about this, Hannibal. Well, when I was a kid, you know, I used to watch uh, Hannibal Lecter movies with my uncle. So my mom hates that, you know. <laughs> and he started to call me Hannibal just to make my mom uh, piss her off, mm -hmm. you know, make a joke. One day, uh, my cousin was pissed me off, man. Take a piss, you know, and I just choked him out, make him unconscious. <laughs> Came inside home and I was eating, you know. That day I threw him inside a, a bin, you know, I was eating. <laughs> You put him in a bin? Yes, inside, <laughs> lock him. And uh, my uncle, he saw everything. He said, come on, man, you now you become Hannibal. Yeah. Because I didn't come say, yes, you know. Say, well, what are you talking about? Now I saw what you did to your cousin, you know, you make him a cousin for him in the bin. This is a Hannibal <laughs> thing, you know. I'm like, really? I yes. I'm like, okay. So, yes, and then I will fight Burma. And he called me and said, hey, come on, man, use the mask. It's gonna be important. Yeah. I'm like, why? Make a different entrance. Yeah. I'm like, no, man, no way. Say, come on, do what I'm telling you to do. I'm like, okay, I will do that. So then I made it and I love it. You know? It is cool. It's an epic movie, filmy, you know. Everybody loves Hannibal. They do. It's recognizable. Yes, yeah, it's, it's like impact. It's strong. For real. I'm just checking. I'm a Hannibal Lecter from yeah. London. <laughs> <laughs> London has his Hannibal. And Brazilian. So what are you thinking in this moment when you're walking out? So you've got your UFC gloves on, big crowd, what's going through your head? I only only think about finish him, you really? know. I only think about win, get the victory. Uh, if you see my eyes, I'm totally focused, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I, man, I don't think nothing else. You know, I don't want to look to the crowd to get distracted. Is that what would happen if you look at the crowd? I think so. Yeah. Well, everybody has his beliefs, you know, yep. and that's what I believe. This is uh, my mom's city's hometown uh, flag. I was fighting. Wow, I never saw that fight like this, you know. Like yeah. Getting shot, I never, I never have seen before. Does it make you really proud? Still? Yes. Yeah. Wow, it's once in a lifetime, you know, mm -hmm. fighting your mom's hometown. Mm -hmm. Was your parents there? Or your mom? No, 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 no. My mom, she's never come, you know. But she'll watch on but TV? My brothers was there. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, 
my wife was there. I had a lot of people there, you know. My godfather was there as well, you know. He always supported me. Wow. And uh, my uncle told me, if you lose that fight, you're gonna be remembered in the city, the biggest loser ever. Your uncle said? Yes, and make sure you win, because... Shh. Pressure? Wow. Good pressure. Good I mean, pressure, yeah, you yeah. know, because it's a UFC, man, you know, mm. it's not <laughs> a pub fight, no. you know. You're representing your country, and not only your country, your city. It's my first MMA fight in Brazil. Mm was my first mm. MMA fight in Brazil. That's wild. Is there much nerves? Are you nervous for this one? For this fight? Because it's where it is and what's happening. Wow. And I think I'm not nervous, but we always are. You know? mm -hmm. You're always anxious, you know, but you gotta, people are, people, they feel the fear, mm -hmm. you know, they're scared, but you gotta control your emotions, mm -hmm. you know, it's because of fear, make you not act, you know, sure. can stop you. So yeah. you, gotta make, you gotta take that adrenaline, you know, you gotta deal with it. You know. Is the it easy way. to control? Yes, it is, you know, mm. once they close the, the... The cage. Where you have to go? Nowhere, yeah. you <laughs> cannot jump and run away, you know. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> okay, so, let's get in. So talk me through what we see. Uh, he's gonna try flying me, look. And he got a, uh, oh look, or kick. They say I don't have, oh look, here you go. Two points, take down, <laughs> half guard. Control the head, some punches in the shoulder. See, yeah. it's not McGregor that did this yeah. first, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> They're nice movements. Great control. They say I pass his guard and try to get half guard again. Punched. Are you aware how good this guy is as well? Or you is just a body to you? Uh, no, he's a good fighter. Yeah. yeah Even you knew then? Yes, mm. he was I was the underdog, you know, and he has 10-1, mm. so he has a decent uh, record. If he gets UFC, he gotta be good, you know. Mm. Uh, 100%, yeah, of course. But there's levels yes. there's in the UFC. There's levels. There's levels. So this is the first time you've seen this as well, right? So we're just working on some, lots of ground and pound. When's the last time you watched this? Uh, I had the highlights, you know, but I never seen the whole fight. No. No, no, I haven't seen that. Well, we won't watch the whole thing. We'll just go to certain points. I think I got excited here. Yeah. Came up, look. <laughs> South Park again, yeah, South Park. See? How did you score the first round? Were you aware of, of how well you were doing? Yeah, I was, you know, I was. I quit in a little bit. So I want to get to this bit here. So who's in your corner? The, the Andre Perdeneiras, you know, José Aldo's uh, coach, head mm -hmm. coach. Uh, he's a legendary coach, you mm -hmm. know. He had, he have uh, produced so many UFC champions and great fighters. Yeah. He's out in, such as José Aldo. Yes, he's uh, the coach of José Aldo. Mm -hmm. Do you train much with? I used to train at Novo Neo. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, I did the camp over there. So yeah. It's a great place. I have good relationships with yeah. that, uh, that guys, you know. They're great people. 
they seem like great people. That's another place I really want to go. Um, so, I don't, just because of the time, I don't want to watch the whole thing, but I want to get, I, would, I want to watch this last round with you. Because, I, is this where tired and fatigue tired, is setting yes. in? Yeah. So yeah, he was saying, come on, man, now you have to show your heart, come on, let's go, now it's all heart, let's go, you mm. know. So, look, can I see? But look he at looks him. worse. Yeah, looks that's worse. weird, you know, everybody was saying like, ah, you lost that fight, how come I lost? How come, you know? That's crazy, man, all the fights I win, they say I lost, you know, I don't understand. Everything I do, ah, was easy, yeah. it was that. Uh, I think that's the... That's haters for him. Man. That's haters and that's the, the epidemic of, um, of people that don't do nothing to their lives, you mm -hmm. know? People that mm -hmm. has magic with premature mm -hmm. ejaculation, you know? <laughs> <laughs> they always say that. <laughs> <laughs> the guy that hides behind the computer, you know? Yes. Keyboard warriors. That's it, brother. They that's just it, looking bro. for reaction. Is this a similar fight if you fight again? Well, man, I because truly believe I will beat him, I will dominate him, yeah. you know, I will take him down and break him. I would truly believe that. Mm. Uh, Is this the... Uh, well, actually, I don't want to give anything away on, on James Krause. We... See, BJJ pressure. Yeah, there. man. Were you looking f to get top man or not interested in that? Pardon? Were you looking to get full man or were you not interested I was, in that? I was looking for him. Uh, I remember I was near him he was like, fuck, fuck. But he was hitting me in the neck. <laughs> <laughs> the back yeah, he of the said head. fuck? He was like, fuck, fuck, because I was grounding upon him. Really? Yes. Uh, he's a great fighter, man. Mm. You know, he's doing very well. He is. I think this changed a lot for him. Also, he only he he lost to Kamaru Usman as well, you know. Mm -hmm. So he high he, accolades, brother. Yes. Very high. Ten fights. Uh, he has ten fights to lose in UFC, mm -hmm. I think. So after after you fight James Krause, so he remains on the ground. I mean, just domination, domination. Take his back. Full man. I mean, it's a masterclass, really, isn't it? Yes. Maybe that fight, he understands that he has to train his ground game. Yeah, I think so. And then it lasts 10 seconds on their feet. Yes, man. 10 seconds is 10 seconds. The long 10 seconds. Yes, yeah. yes. Look at that. I have that picture. Do you? You have yes, this picture? I have. I do have. It's a powerful photo. Powerful still. Yes. I love it. Yeah, I love that picture. I do too. It's, it's very nice. cool, man. I'm very grateful, man, for you for sitting down with me and uh, talking about all of this because it's such a unique perspective for me. This is... You've told me the most crazy stories where any normal person, they can't get out of that, right? No. This is how you finished. Yes. Yes, I see, man. You know, I have friends and they, they cannot get out of this no. crime world, you know. They are back in jail, back and forth, or they get killed, you know. Yeah. And uh, I'm fortunate, you know, I'm blessed. So You're very blessed. Happy, you know? Yeah, I'm so happy for you, man. And I'm a big fan, you know that. Yeah, you know I'm that, a brother. big fan of yours as well. Thank you, my yes, man. Um, when this pandemic's over, we're going to hang out in London as well, aren't we? Oh, in California. And in California. Yeah, get that on there. We California Canada. California Canada. Oh, yeah, mate, so we are we doing bring that. Bring you brother. to the farms. We are. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dream come true, brother. We will, that will be amazing. Sure, my brother. Thank you so much, Claudio. My pleasure, my You're brother. You are honestly one of my favorite fighters, one of my favorite humans. Thank you, brother. And I just can't wait for your fight. I'll be there. I'm going to come out. I, there's only a few fights I can come out for because I'm working, but yours is the number one fight I'm coming out for, brother. So I'll be in, I'll be in this uh, 
in the arena watching and supporting. Thank you, my brother. Looking forward. My man. Oops. Oops.